We focused on the surgical delivery of, of what's going on in the translational science. So the science, uh, it's important to recognize that gene therapy is happening. I mean, it's, it's real and happening. Uh, Luxterna was approved, the first gene therapy for any medical condition anywhere in the human body. And that's a, a credit to doctors Albert McGuire and Gene Bennett at Penn. And that's commercialized by Spark Therapeutics. Some of the gene therapies, though, have not had as the similar kind of success, and so, so the science is still evolving. For example, for advanced wet and dry macular generation, there are clinical trials in progress, but these are still cooking along, and the science of, is evolving, but also the surgical delivery is evolving, and uh, Ben Coe is here with me today because we worked on uh, cell therapy delivery projects that have relevance to its agnostic to whether it's gene or cell therapy. And the traditional way to get to the target tissue in the subretinal space is to do a vitrectomy and then do a retinotomy uh, to inject your investigational agent into the subretinal space. What happened with cell therapy programs, more than one, was that after that procedure where there was a hole in the retina, cells would leak out and cause membrane formation, including epiretinal membranes and in some cases retinal detachment. So we were brought back to the drawing board um, with other surgeons, engineers like uh, Ben's group at Kaleidoscope Innovation Design in Cincinnati, um, a lot of different people actually, to try and evolve ways uh, with new hardware, new surgical approaches, um, animal surgery labs um, to develop a way to deliver into the subretinal space without creating a hole in the retina. So the way that we evolved this in parallel with hardware and surgery uh, in collaboration was a superchoroidal catheter, flexible microcatheter, that has an extendable microneedle that goes into the subretinal space. And with that, uh, and with modern day imaging, like OCT imaging intraoperatively, we could deliver that safely um, in a clinical trial and it's now FDA approved. It's real today, that's a real product commercially available and being employed in one of the uh, cell therapy programs, the lineage formerly Biotime program. Uh, ben might want to comment a little bit about the evolution since we would just think of something and then he would engineer it, and then it would be in my hands in a week. <laughs> well, of course, it was a much bigger team than just myself with the, uh, the Janssen program and the Kaleidoscope engineers and designers. But we were able to work hand in hand with, with surgeons like Dr. Alan Ho to conceptualize something, get it down onto a napkin sketch, a piece of paper. But then over a week or two weeks, uh, 3D print it, prototype it, build it, and get it into the, the labs with, with uh, animals or cadaver eyes and iterate time and time again. So by, by the time we got this into the clinic, we knew we had something that was really uh, going to be safe and reliable and precise as much as it was groundbreaking and, and novel. And so it was the, the dream kind of collaboration that you'd want from an engineering and design team with uh, really expert clinicians to do something brand new and get it into the clinic. Could this um, technology or concept extend beyond the suprachoroidal space? And that's a really good question because initially we tried to go in the subretinal space, which mm -hmm. was fraught with safety issues, specifically retinal tears and retinal detachment. So the suprachoroidal space is a very forgiving space in the human eye. In animal eyes, Ben will attest, uh, much different because of adhesion, so it's much more difficult to pass that catheter. I could see it applying to other areas of the eye going from the suprachoroidal space, but right now it seems to have good traction for getting to target tissue in the back of the eye uh, safely uh, and with precision. The, the fact that you don't have a hole in the retina because you come from underneath um, has a real advantage for, for dosing because there's no leak of your intervention and for cells in particular, it mitigates the issue of membrane formation. So um, this particular subspecialty day is Inspire Innovation is the title and the theme. And I would say, you know, the, 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 the patients who need help, 
uh, geographic atrophy patients, wet AMD patients um, that come in for a lot of injections, inspire innovation, but the failures are what really uh, stimulate change and progress, and the progress only happens when you get different groups together working together. So I'd like to acknowledge not just the Kaleidoscope team, but the, the Biotime Lineage team, um, the Gyroscope Gene Therapy Program, and the Regenex Gene Therapy Program, too.